There we go. Coming to you, Gary, in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Gary and Kenny Show. I'm Gary Kroger in Waterloo, Iowa, where it's very cold and very icy. And I am joined, as always, by Ken Size on Calabasas, where, as always, it's um, it's sunny. It's kind of cold. Ni- it's always kind of nice, right? Well, it's supposed to. We're expecting weather. What Everybody's does that all mean? excited. We're going to get is, weather. What, what is weather? Anything? Well, it's the weather to, to set- us means that there's six inches of snow and, and an ice storm. Weather to you is what? The difference between 65 and 67? Something like that. But when you live out here a all long right. time, you can kind of get sensitive to it. But let's, en- enough about the, the weather. Let's talk about what we usually talk about, which is what ailments we have this week and what bothers well, So what ailments are you? Uh, well, my, my ailment. Oh, fine, Kenny. Thank you for asking. My ailment is sort of um, organic. It's it's not a physical ailment. It's 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 a spiritual, spiritual ailment. It's a psychological ailment. Now I have a yeah. big question for you, Kenny. Yes. A serious yes. question. Yes. Because well, I'm in this yes. shitty weather right now, and I'm yes. 65 years old, and I have yes. a bad knee, and quite frankly, I'm I'm tired of it. Hmm. My wife moved here to be with me. She would mm-hmm. not live in Waterloo, Iowa otherwise. Mm-hmm. So we're going to sell the house. Mm-hmm. But she wants to go back to where she's from in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I'm just tra- but that's where her parents live and they're getting older. And I completely support the move. I wow. understand. We. Wow. I lived here for my mother. Yes. We're going to move for her parents. I get it. But I'm trading this shitty climate for another shitty climate. Mm. And I'm really, if that's where I'm going to die, will I ever get a chance to be a whimpering, you know, climate snob like you again and and complain when it's down to 65, which I'd enjoy? Well, it's hard to know because we're not really sure when you're going to die. Let's just put a ballpark figure. Do do you know? Speaking of which, can I switch to my mailman? I I will come back to you. But speaking of. Yeah, fine. Fine. It turns out I have a hole in my retina. You have a hole in your retina. I have a hole uh, in my retina. That sounds like and a... The, t- and, and, yeah, right. And I have a hole sh- in I my was, retina. Uh, and they sent me to a specialist where they did all of these incredible exams. It's like, a really hole like psychedelic or... stuff. They flash lights in your eyes and stars okay. and everything. And they, take it, and they put you in the room. Right. And it's, it's really it's like an amazing thing. And then they finally... And I'm a little nervous because I you know, got sent to the specialist about a hot... And I had Googled what happens when you have a hole in your retina. You know, it could be serious. What happens? So anyhow, the guy looks and he goes, hey, yeah, you got a hole, but it's healing. You're fine. And I'm like, well, how about that? He goes, but, you know, you are getting cataracts. I said, oh, fuck, really? I'm getting cataracts? He said, yeah. I said, well, what, what, what should I do? He said, well, no, no, it's so slow. He says, by the time you need an operation, you'll probably be dead. <laughs> so I thought that was comforting, right? <laughs> So the truth yeah. of the matter is, so, the so is, that's how you took a left turn from my problem, and now we're bringing it back to I could die anytime. Right. I would like to point out, I was reading something that you know that in our lifetime, go back to 1960, the mm-hmm. average male lifespan in America was 66 years old. That's why Social Security that was, was set that time. That, they thought everybody was going to be yeah. dead. Yeah. Exactly. So it's sort of astonishing to think that the way I feel now is the way most people through history felt going, oh, fuck, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm ready for death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, All right. Well, this is a cheery start to the show. I can't wait to bring on our guests. Well, you brought it up. But Kenny, what do you think I should do? Do I I mean, do I just suck it up and die in Massachusetts? Well, I suppose there are a lot of people like Massachusetts. I don't know how far you're going to be from Boston. Well, well, everything's. Do you like chowder, Boston. Gary? Do you like chowder? I like chowder. I like chowder. Yeah. Uh, it would be on Western Mass, where it's particularly snowy, <laughs> you know, oh, in the mountains right. along yeah. and along the Connecticut River. Oh, you know, the uh, Connecticut maybe. River in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I believe fair. that's the Western River think, of Massachusetts. Don't you think by the time it reaches Massachusetts, they ought to call it the Massachusetts, Massachusetts River? River? It should be uh, but we digress. River. It just gets yeah. better from here, doesn't okay. it? Okay. All, right. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. All right. Anything else you want to talk about? There's a couple of things I want to talk about. What? Politics? Well, I don't know if we need to talk about it. Well, I'll I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up because I think, and I know we have our guest on and she's listening in, so I'd like to get her opinion on it as well. So I've been watching uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, The Last of Us. Have you been watching it? Yeah, I've been watching it. I'm up to date. It's all the rave. Everybody's yeah. loving it. Right. And one of the things that I'm talking about was the gay episode. Yeah. The gay episode. Right. Now, 
And I'm the, I, I don't know if it's a nature versus nurture thing, but I got to tell you, as liberal as I am, when I see two guys kissing, I cringe. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. You don't cringe? No, I really don't. Really? I cringe a little bit. Uh, when I, I, I look make away. a Now, I see two note. women. I see two women. Right. I'm well, totally we can, fine we with that. You can see the pictures behind you. We, I, of course, you're fine with that. Uh, but I make a mental... Uh, there's, I make a mental note because I think, hmm, how would I feel doing that as an actor? And I uh, don't know how comfortable I would be as an actor. I don't know. Uh, I've never kissed a man. Uh, but, but, you know, I make a note of it that, okay, that's a little bit different. But I have no... Uh, reaction of of uh of being uncomfortable in fact i enjoy it going thank god wow really I like to see okay well gerbils made you know it. you I mean, are you're, you're you you've evolved more than i've evolved okay can i have a question oh, oh excellent. okay exactly we're, we're not of... taking questions yet tracy come in and then i'll introduse you but go no, ahead no, come come tracy what is the question okay is there a food that you don't like like what yes. food do you okay what is it is this going to be like a psychological, I say Frankfurters or something? You're go, it's, it's, it's a culinary Rorschach. Here's I love question. Frankfurters. Is if you see someone on TV eating a food that you don't like, mm -hmm. do you also freak out? No, I don't. The okay. only time I freak out, what? the you other thing that I freak out on and that I can't stand and that they're going overboard on it now is the vomiting on screen. Oh, vomiting. I'm the wrong Everybody's <laughs> doing how much can you vomit? How long can you vomit? How real can the vomit be? It's like, how graphic can you vomit? And it, that, that really bothers me. Listen, I, I was an EP on Santa Clarita Diet. I cannot tell you how much time I spent working on vomit consistency, vomit amount. We talked about it. I talked about vomit more during those three seasons than I have before or after. And I have babies. I had babies. And I, I still have that thing where if I see people vomit, I feel like I need to vomit. It's like vomit empathy. I don't want to talk about vomiting anymore until we introduce Tracy. All right, introduce because me. I think if we're going to go this far on the vomit uh, limb, we, we, I we think need people to know should know who is. this person is who's been studying vomit but, for the past but, four years. Let, let, let me say one thing in relation. I'm I don't actually like watching sex on screen. I don't like watching a heterosexual. I'm just like it. I never feel like it's something I need to say. Okay, you're married and you love each other. I'm never that comfortable with. Intimacy on screen, period. Well, what but about it's no porn? different. Well, what about porn? I don't watch porn. You don't? Ooh. No. Ooh. <laughs> Does that make me straight odd? Oh, I, I don't I like to watch. Curious. I don't like fake intimacy. I love sex and I love mm. to have sex with my wife. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to see anybody else having sex. Oh, I, I it, it, all right. All right. <laughs> Enough. On that note, let's yes. bring on our guest. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Tracy is one of those people that um, there are so many hats. I, I'm digging something up here. Um, she wears so many hats that it's hard to, to know what to say. Uh, you were an executive that brought us Malcolm in the Middle, the Santa Clarita Diet. Um, you brought us Louis C.K. So I didn't know what to say. So I just went to your own page it might be your twitter page or something this is what tracy katsky boomer has to say about herself producer bass player nose picker he she or she her her pronouns but i will literally answer to anything just please talk to me or about me sounds so on like that a call note, for, calls for help that sounds what that's what that sounds like please welcome oh, tracy tracy <laughs> katsky boomer hey welcome to the show tracy Hi, thank you. But I do want to talk about nose picking because I did think it was pretty bold of you to mention the nose picking right up front there because it is something that's kind of taboo. We all nose pick. Now, I would say Gary probably who doesn't watch porn or likes to watch, doesn't like to watch other people. He probably doesn't pick his nose. But for the rest of us, we pick our nose, but we just don't. People will not acknowledge it. But you came right out and said, you're a nose picker. And I admire I you for that. that. What? What someone's going to judge me for it? Let them judge me. Everybody will judge you for it, Tracy. <laughs> it's real. You don't nose pick in public, Wait, do you? Hold on. Yes. If, yes, I, if, I, have a, if I have a situation. But oh. let's go back for a second to the sex thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank Not you. liking to watch sex on screen. I mean, look, we can go back to the nose picking after this, but I feel like that's an end we should tie up. Mm-hmm. 
ever in any circumstance that's my first question you don't like watching sex on screen ever in any circumstance and number two is this different than when you were through the years like as a 22 year old would you have a different take on it in other words Ab you're old yes well or, or, or as a teenager um and, and i watched found my dad's playboys and, and you know we'd have porn movies on on eight millimeter that we would find in the, in the basement absolutely enjoyed it it showed me what it was what everything looked like it got me you ready for what may really happen but at, sex became more intimate to me as i became involved in, with human beings hmm. and so once it became intimate that's where it belongs for me and i just don't need to see it You're i'd rather hear it in man. dialogue i am a lovely man you are a lovely and, man but but no, I mean maybe I'm painting a picture of that. I'd love to see people holding hands and kissing. There's all sorts of ways to show we love each other without you know hammering. Wait, so the do, do you whack your Wendell? Well, of course I do. Do you whack you? You don't use porn to whack your Wendell? No, I think really? about my wife. I think about my. Oh no! Unbelievable! <laughs> really? Oh god! Well, yeah. Whoa! I had no <laughs> idea what a puritan you were. No, I'm not a Puritan. I just like it to be real. I don't like things I can't have. I don't like it to be real. I don't real. like can't have it real. That don't exist. <laughs> I don't like things that don't exist. I like Is that like in the Ted Lasso thing when the girl was um getting all turned on when the guy was being emotional and talking about his feelings? There yeah, you go. Like Remember that scene? Yeah. There yeah, you go. Like, really? yeah, just all like right. that. Yeah. I don't know. Now like, I on. love to watch people pick their nose on camera and really get into it intimately. Okay, but also here's the thing, boys. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. It's all about forwarding the story, mm -hmm. right? It's right. like if someone breaks into song, mm -hmm. you're like, right. is this going to forward the story or right. am I just right. going to listen to you sing a song about something? And then in one way, you probably are miserable. And in the other way, you're like, okay, I'll put up with this. If it's an example. But I think uh, uh, seeing two people crawl under the covers tells me everything I need to know about that i just don't need to see your face having an orgasm i don't need to see his head disappear under the I covers anyone's face. one kenny's one, face. someone kenny's face yeah. i just don't need to see that because to me it's reveal and maybe it's maybe that's why my acting career never really took off would Is you like to see I, the it, face i use when i come would you like to see that face god no god okay. no well, for the people in the podcast, I, I, I would. If it wasn't a podcast, I'd do it. Otherwise, you know, everybody right. would enjoy it. But okay. I, 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 wait, but am I coming off weird here? Well, you're not the I, usual. I, I think most people, I, most people, porn is like the biggest business in the globe. I mean, there's no bigger business than people liking to yeah, watch other people okay, having if sex. If you're watching porn, and I know, yes. look, I'm no fool. I know it exists. You, you can do a deep dive, put something up slash porn, and you're going to get miles pages and pages of videos right let's say you're pleasuring yourself to mm -hmm. pornography kenny mm -hmm. yes there are 5900 <laughs> guys with hair on their Wait. back living in the mother's basement just try to imagine what that would possibly be like right. just, while just you're doing there. that kenny there's 5900 guys living in their mother's basement jerking off to the same thing at that same moment oh well that, that if i thought of that <laughs> that would be the quickest way to flash it there. A, i'm not whacking yeah. off and going and all of a sudden occurring to me that there's some bad people sitting on their couches in their mother's thing jerking along with me i mean that's a horrible thought and now you've just run, ruined porn for me for the rest of my fucking Good. life Good. you evil evil oh, man i'm on a mission Good. <laughs> Grace, your thoughts? Oh, that's just a that's just a total buzzkill. I just, I just killed it all in this. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, it's real. You know what? It's it's, it's real. It's as real as nose picking. It happens. You have to know that's the truth. Okay. All right. Well, and I you know those. And and I know enough to know that there are POV porn things, right? Where it looks like your point of view, right? Do you enjoy that, knowing that you could Who be are we talking anybody? to anybody? Who are you, talking about? you know, I don't want, let's just change the subject. I'll, okay. I'll be honest. I
Get a little out of my league here, boys, because believe it or not, I'm not I, I'm not opposed to porn. I think everyone needs to do what they need to do, but it's just not my uh, area of expertise. So mm. I didn't know that some of those, th I didn't know that there was a POV porn. <laughs> I can't oh. tell you why I know. But it's I, unbelievable. But I know. Tracy, <laughs> it's unbelievable. The, the categories of porn. I'm, mm. I'm always amazed, not always amazed, but there are so many categories for like certain types of uh, ethnicities in women. And it's always funny when I see, you know, when they have the choice and I understand Asian women or whatever, or, you know, Indian women are beautiful and what other things, but everyone's, but when you see up there, Canadian women, <laughs> always like, really? uh, it's, <laughs> it's somebody like clicking on Canadian women. Not they're just yeah. like, but is there something erotic or special? Are they in a parka or something like that that turns it's people on? Person wearing like the Google glasses that film, yeah. or is oh, that's the POV you're talking about? Camera, yeah. I'm just fascinated yeah. by this. Like, well, well you know what? The other thing I'm that I don't get, I've I don't been fascinated get... for a second, and now it's like, okay, whatever, that's All gross. Right, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna make my last point because I want the last word. But okay, the other thing that I don't get is that the extreme close up on genitalia, why people find that so fascinating that when oh, they people man, are having intimacy, you got to go in for that close up, close up macro camera. That is not a turn on to me. That is gynecological. So I don't get that. But. OK, I agree. And then I have a question for you. Yes. Why do men mm -hmm. send dick pics? Like, what's yes. the plan? Yeah, the what's plan the is that the, 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 the plan is. There's the concept, and it's certainly perpetuated in porn. I mean, the biggest category in porn is, you know, BBC, which I don't know if you know what that is. I don't. Do you know what BBC British is? Broadcasting. I don't know what. No, it no, is. no. You know what BBC is? It's big black cock. It's all about the size of the penis. I mean, this goes How back. How did we get here, boys? What? How did we get no, here? I, I, it was probably my fault, but I'm. I, I'm going to segue now. I have a segue. Okay. To get us out of this. Okay. Tracy may not like this, but one of the shows she was involved in, one of the people she knows very well, I know who where got in going. trouble because of his dick. Masturbating He's in front of people? Was canceled. Was canceled. And is now uncanceled. Louis Key CK is back. Right? Uh, right. Is he? I don't know. I, I got to tell you, that was like, um, yeah. Oh, you know what to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was an editorialized. Uh, but how, yeah. but what, what, now he did a couple of different versions of his show. Which show were you involved in developing? I uh, the show that you would have seen that I was involved in developing was Lucky Louie, which was the HBO. Right, right, oh, the HBO okay. show. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. Well, it was a terrific show. It was terrific. I mean, he Thank is you. terrific. I think he's well, that. I mean, when when oh, yeah. the, the issues came down, that's what was derailed as well, right? It, was still in production, wasn't it? No, his other show was. Uh, oh, his yeah. other show. That, yeah, I think it was the other show that was happening. Was, yeah. You know, it was okay. nice. That was actually where he, I think that was where he did some of his best work. You know, he was a filmmaker yeah. a long time ago. And when he came with Lucky Louie, HBO had this agenda at the time, like, we're going to do multi cameras. And it was like, we are? Okay, let's do it. That's weird. And he walked in and wanted to do The Honeymooners, but very oh. modern. And I felt like, and, and very modern and very real. And by real, I mean real to his life. And I felt like for that, we did a great job. And it was a surprisingly popular show. It wasn't super helpful with the HBO audience and needs at the time, but people really liked it. It was very, I, it was, it was, yeah, I liked it a lot. It was very smart. Very smart. Well, you, I mean, you developed uh, Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Correct. Is that where you met your husband? That's yes. my hypothesis. That's I'll be, okay. let me let's say something though. Okay. I, I love the thought that I developed it, but in truth, I got a pilot script on my desk that was that script. So that wasn't like my brilliant thoughts or right. notes that developed it. That was my um, I, I was um, I was an executive on it, so I helped sort of get it made and things like that. But that was all creatively. That is all Linwood Boomer. Well, speaking of Linwood Boomer, your husband, um, I know him. I don't know that he even remembers me, but he hired me for Night Court. Mm -hmm. Oh, did he? 
I, I can't even put a number on 96, 97, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I knew who he was because of Little House on the Prairie. And, and you know, he was a big star to me, you know, in those piercing blue eyes. Right. Oh, um, yeah. So I was just flattered that he was nice to me. You know, I mean, he knew me and he was very nice. And I've just always thought the world of your husband. OK, so let's stop right here, Gary. OK. You're fucking lovely. Why would someone not be nice to you? You're very, you're lovely. You're funny. You're, you're a sweet, kind person. You don't even watch porn. <laughs> Why would somebody not be nice to you? That was a very nice thing for you to say, Tracy. I, I appreciate that. Very well, much. let's go back. I remember you. I completely remember watching all your stuff on Saturday Night Live. I thought you were very funny. I, I think you're great. I know. Yeah, he you is know, great. You Everybody always forever. talks yeah, about you. Ken and I have known each other for a long time. Let's go into that. Okay. Go, into, go into you and Kenny. Right. And I want to hear the story. Go ahead, from Tracy. Her, you, I know Kenny. you want to talk about you, but talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much to say about me, but I have a lot to say about you. Please, share. Ken hired me for one of the funnest jobs I've ever had. Um, we didn't do a lot of work. No. But we had a great time. I, that's um, the my, it that, was way back in the 90s when there was a lot of the stand-up comics with brick wall shows you know like evening at the improv and all of those kind of things and ken and his partner had a idea to do a show like that except with sketch performers so they hired me to kind of go out and be a scout and bring people in and film them doing sketches give them some of the names of the people you brought in so come of the names Will of people. Farrell. Will Farrell came in. And Sherry O'Terry. Sherry O'Terry came in. Your original cheerleader thing. Chris Catan. Chris Catan. Before, these are all before they were, when they were grounded. Well, give, give me a date on this, because this is after Comics Rip Live. It well, was a Tuesday. It? it was a Tuesday. Does that help? What year? Out? What year, Kenny? <laughs> what year, smartass? I don't fucking know. 95? It was last century. 95? <clears throat> okay, 95. That sounds right. All right. That's Oh, my God, that's so long ago. Yeah, I, think it's long ago. <laughs> I remember we had and they'd already shot a season, I think, of Mr. Show. But we had a, a tape of Bob Odenkirk's original one man show that he did in Chicago. Yes. You know, I, those tapes, I can't believe, Tracy, I don't have any of those tapes. We've taken all of those them in my garage. I think. Oh, my God, you do. In what format? I think VHS. I should. Oh, on VHS. Okay. You know, I oh. thought about it like a week ago when you were like, "Would you do a podcast?" I was like, yeah. and I was thinking, I was like, I should probably see if I even still have those tapes, but I did. Yeah. So. Oh, well, yeah. I know if you have some of them, because those were the first time I think some of those people got on tape. Oh, well, yeah. well, Tr Tracy, you developed Bob's show after that, didn't you? Didn't you develop a show with Bob Odenkirk? I developed a pilot with Bob Odenkirk. I worked with him a little on Mr. Show, which was on Mr. One of Show, my right? Okay, favorite things ever. And I think yeah. the reason Kenny hired me for uh, that other job, but uh, with Bob on his show, which I, I did a pilot with him at Fox that was really fun and didn't go anywhere. And then, which show specifically are you talking about? Because I've worked with Bob. Right, he, he's there. done a couple of different pilots. Yeah. Well, his, you know, I just knew that. Fantasticness. God, I, I wish that was, I wish I could take any credit for it whatsoever, but he's just. You know. Well, he, he's someone that I've always kept my, when, when I was at Saturday Night Live, Bob Odenkirk was just this oh, kid yeah. who he ran up to me in the lobby at, at, at uh, 30 Rock and handed me scripts. And I said, hey, kid, I can't even read these or I'll be in trouble legally. And now, given the what's become of him, I wish to God I would have gotten in trouble and just taken the scripts. I mean, mm -hmm. so I've always kept my eye on Bob. Well, you know, and, and did you know and Sarah Mr. Sil Show? <clears throat> did you know Sarah Silverman? I, I, mean, I, I met Tracy her, did. but I never knew her. Oh, Tracy, oh, yeah. Because when Tracy was working with us, uh, she was very friendly with Sarah. Are you still as friendly with Sarah today? As yeah, she was my roommate. Yeah, she was his roommate. So that's kind of how, you, I, I, you know, we I do want to talk about that as far as, you know, when Tracy came to me, she was already kind of well, she was part of this like, pack of comics, young comics, even though she was not a performer. She was not stand up, but she knew every single comic. So actually, let's talk about that. How did you go and just find your way into the comedy community? Well, <clears throat> I was very poor. 
Mm. I was in my early 20s. And what I found was I had a horrible breakup with a boyfriend. And what I found was uh, if you have a job, I had sort of a crappy internship in development where I made maybe $200 a week, like just some insanely low amount of money and was living, I think still at the time with my dad who happened to live in LA, which is, you know, my luck. And uh, so what I found was if you called and RSVP'd to the flyer, they would let you into these places for free and sometimes people would buy you food or drinks. So I just RSVP'd to everything. I was like, I will go to every show. There's not a show I won't go to. I will read every script anyone sends me. I will go to any show anyone invites me to. So I started going to all these shows. And you know, I was young enough that I could stay out till one or two in the morning and still show up for work the next day. It wasn't a problem. So I would go out to these shows and then I'd be sitting around the bar. And I don't know if you guys have ever met comics. Often <laughs> they are a touch. I don't want to use the word needy because that feels <laughs> wrong for it. But let's say they enjoy people that enjoy them. And I, yes. I would be like, you're brilliant. And they would be like, I'm going to buy you dinner now. And I'd go, mm. this is a great situation. <laughs> wow. Everybody's going to win right here. Like yeah. I get to hang out with this person. I think it's brilliant and eat. And, and so I found that that in addition to actually getting to know some of the agents and managers that were in the same position as me, just we were sort of junior people trying to make our way in the world that are now some of them very big and fancy, yeah, but yeah. We're just trying to find our way. Yeah. And so that's how, you know, it, it, I inadvertently built up this incredible knowledge base of at the time, every comic that was working through and around Los Angeles and every writer that was trying to get a job staffed in comedy. And it was really mostly because I had a very sad life. Well, no, but I mean, be, 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 no. Be, 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 <laughs> no, but besides the sad life, which is a true of one of the reasons it's important to be very young when you're in this business, is that, yeah, if you hang around and yeah. keep hanging around, people will start talking to you and go like, hey, <laughs> I have nothing to do. You have something to do. I have nothing to do. And next thing you know, you're out having, you know, uh, at what was the what was the deli right next to the Laugh Factory? Uh, what Green was it Blatt's. called? Yeah, Green Blatt's. Blatt's. You'd hang oh, Green Blatt's. Like, right. Till three o'clock in the morning. You know, but you had to be young. But yeah, you get yeah, to I, well, I, I couldn't go, hey. do it now. I go to bed no. at 730. I mean, there's not much that's happening at the bar at 730. When I turned 27 was I had I had sort of worked my way into getting a real job by the time I was 27, which is how I know that I was with Ken more like in 1990, a little earlier than that. Um, I remember one day <laughs> I stayed out till 230 in the morning with a bunch of friends drinking and being an idiot. And the next morning. I was late for work and I was fairly useless in the morning. And it was a real turning point. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I guess that was the, that it's was called the <laughs> It's called authentic learning. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I guess I can't do that anymore. Uh, hey, I have a question for you. That's not a question. Uh, because I'm obsessed. With, we, I follow you now on Twitter. Tracy Katsky <laughs> oh, Boomer. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> she, she, a pinned tweet. Marriage is hard, you guys. And anyone that says that it isn't has never been married to me. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Are you difficult? That, <laughs> that speaks for itself. Okay, it speaks for itself. In case it isn't obvious. No, I will right, elaborate. So, I will elaborate. Please. Because it, it um, you know, um, it, it was during, I, I actually, that was during a point when a lot of people, you know, you, you were getting a lot of uh, articles like, uh, people were admitting like parenting is hard and anyone that says that it isn't is never whatever. And yeah, I just never thought, had I, a time. Never yeah. had. Relationships are hard. And I just, I just, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, there is a lot of things that, and that, you know, when Tra we did, Tracy commented that when we worked together, it was a lot of fun that we probably had more laughs than we did work, which is true. Because Tracy is really hysterically funny. And you see that on her Facebook page. It, oh, yeah. What was the one that I read about? I, I don't, is anybody missing a neck? Because I have two. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Sorry. 
I see a little book. Here's a Tracy. (laughs) In case it isn't obvious, I'm an expert on basically everything. And I'm not sure why the government isn't even reaching out on pressing current issues like UFOs and inner child work and bass modes in indie music and skillet cookies. You have a free association kind of... um, Anybody interested in more of Tracy's witticisms... Can contact us here at the Gary and Kenny Show. So, Tracy, how many followers do you have? Um, actually, I don't know. I, at one point, I had like I don't know, maybe twenty five hundred, which I thought was great for someone that is not famous and has never really tried to be famous. No, I'm telling you, <laughs> no. These, I, they, they, that's I, your Facebook page. Those things you post are very funny. Yeah. Hey, if I, I if if I, if I try to friend you, will will you friend me back? If oh, I friend you, I don't. Usually, I'm Facebook friend a lot of strangers because that's weird. And then, like, you put up a picture of your. Well, page are you like, saying you're not going to friend me? Well, well, you won't you friend me friends. now? You'll friend me now, yeah, right? I will. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Tracy. So, <clears throat> besides, there's a lot more that, right? stuff that's yeah. very funny that she she writes, and I do encourage yeah. people to go to her Twitter page. And if she gets any more followers, I I want to get a piece of the action. But nevertheless, let me ask Tracy, what are you doing now? Um, let's see. I'm in a band. It's very fun. And, um, I'm, yeah, I'm a I'll tell band. people okay. You're the name of the band deal. is the name of the band is the, name of the band is the drama dolls, which coming from a, and, it's uh, not the comedy dolls. How come it's not the comedy dolls? You're a comedy girl. Should have been the comedy dolls, not the drama. You know dolls. What? The three of us, uh, original band members had all been in other bands that were very, had different levels of what we felt at the time was unnecessary drama. And we got together and started playing because we were like, I, I, we couldn't, we couldn't, we needed it an outlet that was no drama. So then we call ourselves. I don't know. This has been a lot. You've been doing this for a few years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, you it's made any really money? Fun. You made any money? Uh, 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 orig- original music. Original music, um, every once in a while we'll throw in a cover. We have actually made some real money, which wow. is kind of crazy to me. I know. Every time. Um, are I you on Spotify? Spotify? We are on Spotify. It's Drama Dolls LA Drama and Dolls. DramaDollsLA.com. And there's another band called Drama Dolls. That isn't us. That I don't know how to. I don't know how to tell you to do that. I'm old, guys. I don't know how to tell people to do that. And we're you're younger than we are. We'll help you. Yeah. We'll Ramadals, help you. there you are. Um, yeah. <clears throat> all right, I have yeah, an unanswered sure. question. I want to go back to this. Okay, so you and Boomer, your eyes meet. G- give me some of that. I, 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 g- give, give me the, the Boomer story. We were, uh, I got the pilot script for Malcolm in the Middle, and I brought, I, you know, like drove to my boss, you know, it was back before you could just email something to someone. So I drove to my boss's house and said, you have to read this tonight. And then, we met with him. I was dating somebody else at the time, and he was married to somebody else at the time. So we just started working together, and I found him terrifying. Um, he, uh, if you don't know him, he is a powerful man that is not necessarily the warmest person when you first meet him. And I found this very daunting. And uh, so then, you know, we went through the development process, and it was just a that that's a whole other story and for if for people that are interested in that and then uh we got the pilot picked up and i was like oh my god I, i'm gonna have my boss said you got to be in every casting session and i want you on the set for every single shot of this pilot and i was like oh no i'm gonna have to get this guy to like me <laughs> this is horrible so i started bringing him coffee and we started <laughs> smoking and I just, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to woo him just to be nice to me because I found him <laughs> terrifying. But like, he would be so horrified at this story, at this version that I'm telling. And then, um, so then we started working together, but my company had a policy of not dating the people that you worked with. So then he was like, well, we should probably be dating because there's a lot of chemistry between us. And I was like, no. So Absolutely not. Linwood came right out. He was feeling this. Now, you're in a relationship and he's married when this he said that. All a very compressed timeline. Okay. In, in truth, this was sort of over the over a year or so. God, I'm not doing a good job of telling this story. No, you, you, 
I, I, I'm enjoying I've it more never, than watching sex. Have you ever met anybody else in the world uh, named Linwood? Never. Whose last name is Boomer? I mean, I always yeah. thought that was the greatest name that was ever created is Linwood Boomer. I mean, you, you got to be somebody if your name's Linwood Boomer. Apparently, most of the other people that are named Linwood are black. And he mm. tells the story of every time um, someone would come in for an audition, if they only saw his name and knew nothing about him, they would always be disappointed that he was a white guy. They'd walk in and be like, hey! Oh. And so see it. Yeah. Yeah, that is a sign Thanks. of it. Yeah. Wow. Hey, um, let's talk about uh, uh, Night Court, because now it is back. And have it's you seen a new one? No, have you? Has Lynn People love it. Has Linwood seen it? We have it. We keep meaning to, and then we just sort of have her playing video games. <laughs> I, I, I watched one. I thought it was very funny, actually, but it had an annoying laugh track. It just it didn't need to be as stimulated as it was artificially. Um, but- it's just it's just interesting to me that this is what we're doing. I mean, we'll get into the state of comedy, which it is, which is. I guess the reason they're bringing these titles back is maybe the only people who are really watching TV are older people who are kind of relate to these shows from the past, right? No, but I, I think, don't know. I think it's very, very, very hard to launch a comedy right now. It's very yes. hard to launch a show because there's so many shows that it's hard to get any attention for any specific one. And um, so if you have anything to go off of like a right. if you have anything name recognition or anything I, like that yeah. it you're trying really yeah but i think it has something little- to but i don't know if and uh, well maybe i mean it, it is amazing how you know, the streaming services are bringing back shows that did skew all my friends uh, show criminal minds is a big hit on paramount who would have thought that you mm-hmm. know a lot so you do have that but I, this also begs the question but, you know, if you linwood is ever going to do, think about it is malcolm in the middle redo it I mean, bring well, it back. Well, it's not because he hasn't been asked. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, really? Okay. Well, of course he has. All right. I'm oh, just yeah. saying. Oh, I yeah. mean, for the well, he might be now that you have this big hit with, um, you know, uh, uh, Night Court. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> you know, know, uh, he ran Night Court for a year or two, but uh, he, uh, he didn't, uh, it wasn't his creation. It, it wasn't his he, creation, but I he had an association. I think the problem with him doing another Malcolm is that was a pretty outstanding situation where what happened was once we got that picked up, no one was paying attention to it. We had a 13 episode mid season order and it was the only single camera show. It was either the only or one of the only two single camera shows on the air. It was also a family show, which was not exciting at the time. People were not into family shows. It was all sort of 20 something like, let's make it look like friends. So we got left completely alone while we were making it. And then um, it was when Doug Herzog, that angel straight from heaven, went to Fox and was just not a big noter. Like he just didn't give a lot of notes, but he hadn't developed it. So he didn't have that executive thing of like, I'm going to tell you a lot of things to do now with their script and show. Um, So they, and then he got, I don't remember if he got fired or he quit that job. So, and then I think he left Fox. He wasn't happy. Got that job. And then she brought me over as head of comedy. So suddenly, Linwood is no one giving them notes, frankly. <laughs> like, you hear that them. a lot. You Whoa. hear that a lot. Like, we'd sort of try, but every now and then I'm like, that's dumb. Or not really. Yeah, but no. like, you know, we give a little note here and there. And that was. He just did his own thing. And how are you going to get that again now? Like, how is he going to go and do something now where he well, just wasn't the appeal? Burn? Wasn't the appeal of streaming services the fact that they just gave you money and no notes? I don't know if that's true anymore. I think that it's, was, I, mean, I, I can tell changed. you on Santa Clarita Diet, that was totally the case. Santa Clarita Diet was such a brilliant I, I mean, it was sort of like a moment in time where it was before. What service was that on? That was Netflix. And I think we weren't the first internal Netflix production, but we were one of the first for sure that didn't have an outside studio. So, you know, we just did. 
they they hadn't formed all the systems yet like they did they would be hiring people as we needed you know like uh we need to figure out music for the show well we don't have a music department and we don't have anyone working there so hold on let us hire some people they would run uh they would do these powerpoint presentations about how the streaming service worked because none of us had any idea and they would bring in me uh, me and victor fresco to watch the to watch these powerpoints and they would look at us like now does that make sense right, does that make right, and we're like right. oh we're their guinea pig. We're their tester yeah. audience. They don't know yeah. what they're doing at all. This is hilarious. And on on a lot of the deals, we ended up sort of helping them just because they were brand new and they hadn't done a lot of those kind of deals before. So, you know, we ended up helping them set some templates. And now these places are huge. I mean, now the so streaming that means services are they're, they're spending more money, so they're giving the notes. It's not even spending more money. It's that they are a bigger service and there's more people that have jobs that need to participate. Who, who need to things. justify them as well. Yeah, I know. Because it is, I mean, I don't know how interesting it is to people, but it is amazing to me that shows that become very successful in the day when notes were very, very much of a process. It was like, it was understood. If whatever show you were doing, there was... Car the current department, which was in charge of your show, and as you were doing the show, you would get notes, and the notes were unbelievably horrible. A lot of ninety, there are, were people who had writers' backgrounds, and there's some people you respected, but they were more few and far between. They were the exceptions, not the rule. But the rule generally was these people who weren't funny and would give you the most ridiculous notes possible. Yeah, yeah it and really it was only the funny. ones, and only the ones that the the showrunners that were strong enough. And had the vision enough to fight them on it, or just do what they wanted to do anyhow, were the ones that survived. But generally, it was it's it's amazing. You know, I used to when when I was at Fox, we sort of thought about it in terms of success. Like if someone was unbelievably successful, if they had a big hit show, they wouldn't take any notes. Right. And then if they had a show that was clearly going to get canceled because no one was watching it, <laughs> they wouldn't take notes. It was sort of everyone in the middle that right. were the you know that were a little bit screwed because I, i'll tell you guys having worked a lot at networks and sort of in that corporate structure here's the tough part these are all a bunch of people that their job is to deliver a product to their boss that is a successful thing so as much as it feels like they're just kind of these people you have to deal with their job often rests on if a show is successful. Mm -hmm. So they genuinely do want what is best for the show. Mm -hmm. And when they give notes, they are genuinely saying things that they want to make it better. The, I think the best people um, really at being executives are the C students because the A students do all the things like they're on it. They have their notes and they make sure they get taken and they read them right away and have a good page and everything's really well thought out and they talk to those showrunners and get their notes taken. And then there's the C students like I was when I was an executive, which is like, yeah, I read it. And, I, you know, and if yeah. someone didn't take all my notes, I'd be like, oh, well, I'm, I'll, I'll call them later. Like I just didn't. You know, because to some extent, you just have to trust the force and trust right. the universe and let people right. do what they want to do. If I'm the smart person on a show and I'm the executive. That is terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> if you're the smartest person in the room, my God, everything's you might as well just clear right now. That's well, disaster. there's another there's another type of person who was in current was the people who, yeah, they, they didn't really want to. They didn't see their job being with the network. They saw their job. Ultimately, they wanted to be a comedy writer, too. So that there was also sure. that degree of the people who were in current who would say, who would want to say, would you read my script? Because I had that a couple of times where they would suddenly oh, give a script. and you'd, uh, give it. Yeah. So you had that type as well. But anyhow. Yeah. So Tracy, now what do you think of comedy now, Tracy? Is it <laughs> funny still? Is comedy funny? <laughs> you know, that was one of your editorial pauses again. I'll tell you what my real problem is with comedy this is, is there's so many shows right now and they're so good. There's so many good shows on the television that people are really getting a lot from. There's so many of them. And often with a comedy, there's not a huge reason for existence. Uh, it's not like people are walking away from it going, 
I feel moved. Yeah, right. So it doesn't have the same kind of emotional weight. So then you go, okay, well, is it really funny? And there's a few shows that still work in in those categories. But if you see something now, like when I'm trying to watch something and it's a show that's just, it's a B, you know, it's just mediocre and, and it's not bad. Like it's certainly not bad, but it's not great. It's like, I cut, I am so behind. I have this many shows to watch. Like if something's a B, we I won't do, make space yeah. for it. Right. And if I don't have like this incredibly intense emotional connection, I won't make space for it. So I end up seeing things like, did you see that John Cena show, Peace, Peacemaker, I think it was? Most hysterical. I love that show. I love that show. It's hysterical, but it's not, it's not a, it's not a quote comedy. It's just it happens to be hysterical. Right. And I yeah. kind of feel like that's where the future is going. But the thing that strikes me as sad is the way that the business is set up right now. Comedy and drama are thought of as very separate. So it's hard for people it's a little bit harder to navigate for people that want to do both in one show. Like if you want a funny show that also has a lot of dramatic weight to it, you kind of have to talk well, to is Ted Lasso. Of- is Ted Lasso a comedy? Well, uh, there's an example. To me? To, yeah. Well, to, I, to, I like if Ted you Lasso. put it in a category, it's not a, puff, it's a, it's, it's a show, oh, right? I guess is a comedy, but it's, there's no expectation. It's going to make you laugh out loud. Is there? Right. You know what show's great? Hacks. Have you seen Hacks? Fantastic. I haven't seen Hacks. It's unbelievable. And, and that, Fantastic. That's Lorraine Newman's daughter, by the way, Gary. Really? Yep. Listen, it's, it's Gary. It's on my list that I haven't gotten to. Hacks? All right. I'm writing it down. No, I'm for Facebook you friends, you've given me a show. Well, no, <laughs> I, I, I do want to uh, pursue. Can I pursue? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Pursue. I'm pursuing. Do you go to comedy clubs? Almost never. I only only go to comedy clubs when it's a good friend of mine. But so you can. yes, both of my kids are away at school, so now I theoretically could go to comedy clubs. I again. want to go with you. We should go to a comedy club together. Good, I'll go anytime. I love comedy clubs. I just have like I've had a life where it wasn't. Well, isn't comedy the place you see stand-up comedy now? TikTok or YouTube? Um, I don't watch a ton of stand-up. So you anymore. couldn't name? Could you name who's happening now in stand-up comedy? Probably not. Right. That's, it, it's a, because that was our job. That was it back in the day. But also, what is what's happening even mean anymore? Like the world is so big and fragmented. Like what there does that are, even mean? There are big celebrity comedians out there that we don't know their names. Big. Well, but there's also like, for example, there's co- comic stuff like, like the Try Guys, like those guys, and like sort of Danny Gonzalez and and a uh, um, Curtis Connor and Drew good in and sort of that there's that whole school of the youtube guys that aren't necessarily stand up and they aren't necessarily it's almost more like a seth myers thing than than a stand up thing but there are people on um uh uh there are stand up specials on netflix well, doing more yeah. more jim than- gaffigan is doing fine nate bargazzi is my new favorite I know, but those guys were around when we were. I mean, Jim. Yeah, Gaffigan that's what I was going to say. That's, yeah. been around forever, that's not. Fairly. That's not Nate, the up Nate and coming. Nate hasn't been around comic. that long, has he? Has Nate's Nate been around for a long while. Time? Has he, he? I mean, he's, he's fucking brilliant. He's, he's blowing up now. You know what the oh, stand- You know what the comedy shows I miss, and I don't. It, when I thought this was, it was laugh out loud funny, hmm. I would like to, them to do a new version of Mr. Ed. <laughs> My mother, the car. My mother, the car. Okay, let me tell you something. Yes. I was part of a development team that was trying to do a new version of Mr. Ed. Really? (laughs) So this is a good idea. Well, no, the the thing is, I dismiss all the way. Here's the really hard part: is figuring out the line between self-awareness and presentational. Like, it's very silly. It's just very silly yeah. in a way that people don't necessarily accept now. And they don't, it's right, like, exactly. How do you do it without being winky, like winking at the camera, like, huh, right? Right, they, they, they put peanut working. butter in the horse's mouth, and that was a special effect we were fine with. Back right, then. but the thing, you the couldn't do you, that now. The word you used is exactly right. I loved as a kid those shows that were just outright 
make you laugh silly. I love silly. I loved Abner Costello. They had a sitcom, which, by the way, Jerry Seinfeld says his show with Larry David was kind of developed around the, Ab- yeah. uh, the Costello show. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing where the only intention, even in the honeymooners, their only intention, except for, you know, maybe that moment at the end, was to the laughs. Just laughs, 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 laughs. Right, Silly. That exists. Like, did you see, I mean, if you think about, like, I got two kids in a, in a teenage, late teenage demographic. That stuff still very much exists. It's just not made for people our age <laughs> anymore. Oh, okay. It, well, just give me an example. Well, well, way, an example? Uh, the way I see it is it, it's sort of the idea. It's it's the meta of the meta of the meta of the meta. It's like I gotta write this down. <laughs> it's it's it, it it's a self awareness thing that is past it's a, a self-aware that is making fun of the self-aware paradigm of being self-aware that is okay. so far beyond the thing. I, I, I know it because my kids will send me memes that I'm like, okay, I have to dissect them. I have to think right. about them. Like what? And I know it's funny. Like I can feel that, it, you know, when you feel in your stomach, like, oh, that's funny, but you, you have to really like get well, yourself in, words, in that. Si- si- what was and silly I have for you. Why? You want to hear it? Yes. I worked at Nickelodeon for a while. Yes, I remember that. Um, which I don't recommend. <laughs> <laughs> which if you are in a certain demographic were your I mean those were the those were sort of the the comedy bibles for kids that age. Mm-hmm. And uh I think that style of comedy of being random because that's what you could really do on on Nickelodeon is what permeated that culture. And so that's what they've taken with them. So there's a certain randomness to comedy now that is less linear and less narrative. And it really suits itself to something like TikTok or Instagram, where it's very quick. It's just like a mm-hmm. snap of a moment. But it's the juxtaposition of things that sh- have no reason to be together. It is right. the notion of the response to something that is just very arbitrary. Uh, God, I'm making things sound hilarious with my. Well, no, but I, I, I mean, I guess it, just going back for for me, it's just I do miss. There was a type of comedy which was very slapstick, which was very vaudeville, which was just outright silly. That I maybe they are doing it silly stuff, but I don't know if are they are they doing that kind of slapstick, you know, stuff that I used to laugh out loud at. You know, the poking the Three Stooges comedy. Although, no, you know, I don't think so. I tried to indoctrinate my kids with Three Stooges and they didn't find it funny whatsoever. And this was at any point in their life. I think it's very different. I think it's, it's well, more it arbitrary. Is. I don't think they require the traditional first act resolve and second well, act, you know, or, or any of that. I'm sorry. Uh, that right. silly it's very is arbitrary. Gone. I'm sorry. That silly is I, I, gone. I That's my opinion. Well, you know, it's just silly. It's a different kind of silly. Yeah, it's slightly more cerebrally silly. And even then, it can it's, be cere- it's, cerebral. Well, you know, so immediately, I, I think so. once you make silly cerebral, it is no Fun, longer silly. Funny or Die has been around for a long time, but that was really for my kids the template of this is funny. When yeah. you have a, 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 a landlord who's three years old demanding her fucking rent from Will Ferrell, yeah. that's what my kids find funny. Yeah. That's the absurdity kids, that they find funny. Today, that's their slapstick. Know? I got. I, I mean, if you go to the, the the People magazine definition, what we used to use for the 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 paradigm, which is you know, it's either um, interesting people in regular situations, or I'm sorry, extraordinary people in regular situations, or ex- normal people in extraordinary in extraordinary situations. situations. So, you know, you have like the world's most normal guy and he's surrounded by aliens, or an alien. Oh, I was going to pitch that. Most- oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, where do we I don't know why in? people aren't doing shows about aliens. <laughs> Clearly, there's. I don't know why that's not more of a topic. It's driving me well, crazy. Well, it's something you bring up quite so a lot, up up judging from your Twitter feed. Zombies. Yeah, you know why? Because no one's dealing with it. That's why. No I have dealing. a theory that like aliens landed, but it was in 2019 when we were dealing with like the height of all the craziness. You know, the pandemic is just coming in, and then the, and they, the election, and then you know all the craziness, and pe- people are like, oh. 
there's alien craft and everyone's like, we don't have mental space for this right now. We can't. <laughs> right. And they I just ultimately said, fuck it, forget it, we're gone, yeah. right? And they're like, take me to your leader. <laughs> right. And everyone's like, we don't have time to take you to our leader because we're in a big fight about who our leader is. And we're not, <laughs> we don't have, we don't have well, space for you, sir. Let's pitch it. Hey, we're going to let you go. I got to go out and chip <laughs> okay, ice. Okay. I have no. to go out and chip ice. I'm Tracy, so sorry. thank you so much for doing hey, this. I hope Tracy, you have a good time. Oh, I think it's wonderful. And thank you for friending me. Uh, you know, I put up a lot of political posts. Hopefully you'll enjoy some of what I put up. Kenny is always amusing on well. Facebook. I've been a fan of you since I saw you on Saturday Night Live. I'm excited well, you're very kind. as a friend. You're, you're, I'm Celebrity delighted. Friend. We, will, we will share these little stories and videos and your funny little statements. I really enjoy. It. Say hi to Linwood. I was I was Judge ju, ju, Judge Jimmy Cleaver. I did magic on the show. They taught me to do magic so I could compete with Harry, and it was all basically almost live. Sure Harry loved that. Well, Harry yeah, taught me how to do these things, but I don't know I was if I'm allowed to tell him. Uh, Tracy, thank you for being our guest, first of all. Uh, thank you all for watching or listening to The Gary and Kenny Show. We're on all the popular podcast platforms. We are on DBNA Streaming TV. And if you go to our YouTube channel, The Gary and Kenny Show, give us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate it very much. Till next time, so long. Yes, and no thumbs down, even if you want no to thumbs down. Thumb, yeah, yeah, thumbs, thumbs up. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.